right, so here we have that the number of gallons of water in a storage tank at time t in minutes is modeled by the equation w of t equals 25 minus t squared for t between zero and five. And it's asking for at what rate in gallons per minute is the amount of water in the tank changing at time t equals three minutes. Okay, so this is simply a situation where we just have to find the derivative of this function and evaluate the derivative at three because um, it's you know saying at what rate and it's saying about rate in gallons per minute is the amount of water changing in, in, the, in the tank. And we're given the equation for how much water is in the tank. So this is literally like a textbook example of rate of change or how a derivative can be applied. So um, we're just gonna find the derivative of W of T. So W prime of T will be negative two T. And we wanna find the derivative when T is three. So W prime of three. That is simply negative two times three. So our answer is just negative six. So the answer is D. All right, 13. All right, so here we got a slope field. I want to see which slope field or which equation matches the slope field. So when it comes to these types of problems, there's usually strategies that you want to rely on, but you can always just brute force it. You can always just plug, plug and chug numbers and points until you get the one that works. Now, obviously that can be tedious and take you know a while, but it's always you know gonna work eventually. Um, when you um, move on to like a course called differential equations, partial differential equations, you're gonna learn a lot of strategies for these types of problems. But anyways, um let's kind of see what's going on here we can see that at uh, this line here the line y equals four the slope is zero dy dx is zero and we could see that when y is above four when y is greater than four the slope is negative if negative slopes and all in here the slopes are positive Even though, even down here, all over, at zero it looks like it's undefined. It looks like there's no there's no slope at zero. Or maybe there is. Maybe it's just, maybe it's gonna be zero. Probably it's probably gonna be zero because it's probably on the line. But in either case, one key characteristic, if you look at this, is that the slopes along each horizontal line, you know, each line y equals some value is always the same. Like all across here, all of these slopes are the same. They're all parallel to each other. All these slopes are the same here. All these slopes are the same here. All these slopes are the same all across the graph. And what that means is that the slope is not even dependent on the x value. The x value doesn't, doesn't have an effect on the value of the slope. Only the y values do. So um, again, you can always brute force it and check, but then that lets us know that it can't be an equation with an X variable in it because the slope doesn't even depend on the X value. So that leaves us with B and D. Now, um, we just want to see essentially um, which equation will make the slopes negative over here and leave them positive for below. Okay, so here the Y values are above four. So let's just say like Y is, let's just test for Y is five or something. So let's just test y is five and like x is, you know, x is one. We'll test it for here. So we got five, four minus five, you get a negative one over four. And we get a negative value here. So five. And then um, here we would get a, Five, well, five squared times a negative one. So they both give you negatives. It doesn't really help us much. Now, um, let's now check over here. Let's check, let's pick like X, let's pick Y is two. Let's pick Y is two. And, you know, let's just go with X is one again. So let's see if, if both equations are gonna give you positive values. So we're looking at the slope essentially like around here. Okay, so if we put, y is 
two and x is one in the here. There is no x that so we don't have. We don't yeah, even care about that actually. We'll get two times a negative two over four. So we get a negative, we get a negative value. We get negative one actually. But all of these slopes here are positive. All these slopes are positive. So it can't be this one. And when you check this one, you put negative two into y, you'll get a positive four. And you get positive six. So it's going to check out that the answer is D. And again, this is one of those problems where you got to just use general strategies, but you can always plug numbers and check to see what will work out. Let's look at problem 14. All right here we got an example of a differential equation. So we have the weight of a population of yeast is given by this differential function, where y of t is measured in grams and t is measured in days. The weight of the yeast population increases according to the equation dy over dt equals ky, where k is a constant. At time t equals zero, the weight of the yeast population is 120 grams, and it's increasing at a rate of 24 grams per day, which of the following is an expression for y of t. OK, so I'm going to go through this you know, all through like the, the integration process the long way, I guess. Um, maybe you are already familiar with what type of um, what type of form your answer will be when you have a constant, when you have a rate of change that you know is in the form constant times your variable ky, constant rate of change essentially. Um, well, not constant rate of change, not like in that, not like in um, not like in algebra, but when you have a constant times your variable y, a, a ky. Anyways, let's pretend that we don't know how to the equation, so we would integrate this, bring the y to the left, the t to the right. So we have the integral of one over y dy is equal to the integral of k dt. The left will give us the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to kt plus a constant. Integrating, remember you have base e, e raised to that. So you're going to get y is equal to e raised to kt plus c. Now this is the same as y is equal to e to the kt using exponent properties times e to the c. Now if we, I break it up like this because this allows you to see that e to the c is just a constant because e is a number, e is about 2.71 and c is you know, an, a constant. So this is just gonna give us a, some, another constant we're just gonna call it a. So we're gonna write our equation as y is equal to a times e to the kt. The a is always the, going to be the initial value when it's in this form, at least, because if you plugged in, you know, zero for t, you're going to get 120 for y, it says. So it's supposed to satisfy this initial condition, 0, 120. And that, you know, again, like we can just, I'll just show you verifying it. A equals e to the, if it's e to the zero, that's just like one. So that means your a is 120. So then a is 120, so then you know your equation will then be y is equal to 120 e to the kt. So now we need to solve for k. And the way we can do that is by simply using this equation here. Because we're told that at time t equals 0, the yeast population is 120, which means that y is 120. That tells us y is 120. But also give us the, gives us the value of the derivative because it's saying it's increasing at a rate of 24 grams per day. That means dy dt is 24. So from there, we can go 24 equals k times 120. Then we just solve for k, divide by 120. And you get 24 over 120, k is 1 fifth. Rewrite our function as y is equal to 120e to the 1 fifth t. And so our answer will be b. Number 15, so we got the graphs of f and g, and we wanna see which of these statements here are false. Okay, so, 
First one says the limit of f of x as x approaches one is equal to zero. So let's see, is there approaching one from the left? We're getting to zero. From the right at zero, so yeah, that's true. So that checks out. That's not false. The limit of g of x as x approaches two does not exist. So now we're looking at this graph. When we approach two from the left, we get to one. We have a point here, two, one. When we approach two from the right, we get negative one. So both of these are not equal. So the limit is not gonna exist because both, both the right-hand and left-hand limit have to equal each other for the limit to exist. So that's true, that's not a false statement. All right, C, the limit of f of x, g of x plus one as x approaches one does not exist. Okay, so that leaves us then with looking at f of one and g of two. f of one, I believe is, does exist, f of one is zero. No, sorry, f of one is two. So we have, we have a solid dot over here. So that does exist, that does exist actually, so one, two. So two and then g of two, we got, one g of two is one so this actually does exist because this is just two and then so this is actually a false statement so the answer is going to be c